And now I want to welcome uh, Ricardo. Uh, he's the host of uh, Bitcoin Italia podcast. And for sure, he's going to kill it. Yes. Come on. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, as, as Lunatic said, I'm Ricky. I'm the host of, a Bitcoin, of the Bitcoin Italia podcast. I'm an activist. And now we're going to talk about El Salvador because probably what's going on in El Salvador is not what you expect is going on in El Salvador. Um, we are all Bitcoiners in this room, so we remember perfectly these three dates, right? I was in my couch in Milan on June 6th when uh, Jack Mullers walked on the stage in Miami and they announced that El Salvador was making Bitcoin legal tender. After only 13 years, Bitcoin was already currency somewhere. Fantastic. I was super excited. And I was even more excited when President Nahib Bukele made to approve the Bitcoin law in just one week. How cool was that? As an activist, I thought that this is a dream. This is, this is how, this is the reason why Bitcoin was born. My excitement started to fade when the Bitcoin law took effect on the 7th September 2021. And when I quickly realized that the Salvadorian were given a sort of a Bitcoin wallet called the Chivo, there was basically a custodial wallet, strictly KYC'd, strictly closed sourced, so basically a spyware, right? And uh, after a couple of months, there was a huge conference in San Salvador called Adopting Bitcoin, and President Bukele took the stage surrounded by fireworks, and during this speech in front of a thousand Bitcoiners, some are here among us, he started saying, we just orange peeled five million people here in El Salvador. I was shocked. Because you know, El Salvador has approximately seven million people, so for real, this guy made more than half of the country a Bitcoiner, a true Bitcoiner. And I was also a little upset with my colleagues back then because um, we did see a lot of podcasters and journalists go to El Salvador and pay for their breakfast via lightning in McDonald's and then drive to the Bitcoin beach and spend money on the ocean. But of course you can pay in San Salvador, that's the capital of the, of the state. Of course you can pay in Bitcoin at the Bitcoin beach, it's called the Bitcoin beach, so we should expect that. But what's going on in the rest of the country? What happens if you drive south, uh, close to La Union, in the poorest part of the country? Is it really possible to buy, for example, bananas at the street markets with a lightning transaction or with a Bitcoin so transaction? So that's when we decided, me and my partner, Laura, the smartest Bitcoiners in the world, to go to El Salvador ourselves and to do the real tour of the, of the country. To go outside, up in the mountain in Morasan, to visit Metapan, to tour it all, to see if this was actually possible. So we left Milan with no cash, no credit cards, just a wallet stuffed with Satoshi, not many, enough. And we lived in El Salvador 45 days just with that. So was it possible? Was it easy? Um, we have only 20 minutes now. There's a lot I should, uh, I should tell you. If you are interested in it, uh, we made a daily journal, uh, www.bip as Bitcoin Italia podcast dot show. You are, it's in English as well. So if you want to dive deeper into our, uh, into our experience there, uh, you should check it out. I think it turned out a pretty cool uh, uh, reading. So we left the country, and when we landed in El Salvador, we immediately realized that, that probably our life there uh, wouldn't be easy for the next few weeks. Because, for example, you realize that hotels, hotels are not that keen on accepted Bitcoin. Only 15% of them, they do accept Bitcoin. And so we decided, so we had to learn a few tricks, right? 
what do you do? Simply when you want to move around the country, you download from, from Google uh, the list of the hotels and you call them all. Hey, I'm Ricky. I'm working on Bitcoin. I have only Bitcoin. Do you accept my Bitcoin? Yes, I can sleep there. No. Then I move on to the next hotel. It's a very effective way to orange peel Salvadorian for real. So you should try that. And food. Food was easier, but only in the small, small rural uh, restaurants because all the big chains, except uh, uh, international big chains, like as I mentioned already, McDonald's or Pizza Hut, um, big stores, big restaurants, they don't accept Bitcoin in El Salvador. And, uh, but small villages, in small villages, in small uh, uh, restaurants, they do. Why they do? Because they have a Chivo wallet in their pockets and your money are real money for them. So instead of losing a cr uh, the client, they're going to try to accept Bitcoin and they're going to give it a try. So that part was really, really easier for us. Uh, for example, car rentals. None of the major car rental uh, uh, companies, AVs, budget, you name it, none of those accept Bitcoin. They don't even want to hear about Bitcoin. But surprisingly, there are a lot of small businesses all over the country, uh, small owners with a fleet of 20, 25 cars, and they want your Bitcoin because they know they can make money, they can make business uh, uh, with Bitcoin. So this, this part of the adoption in El Salvador is working. This is our Bitcoin car. It was a shitty 15 years old Mitsubishi. But we paid it in Bitcoin, so for us it was a Lambo, and it was a beauty to drive around the country. You should, you should try that. But what happens when you actually enter a store in El Salvador and you ask to pay in Bitcoin? This is what they show you. This is not my picture. I find it on the internet as a foreign citizen. I cannot have Chivo because you need your ID number to, activate, to actually activate the app. But when you go to a store and you ask to pay, this is what they show you. As you can see, this is not a Bitcoin QR code. This is a dollar QR code. Because you see, the Chivo app has two sides, right? One to receive and send Bitcoin, and the other one to receive and send dollars using, they say, the Bitcoin network. We know it's not true, but this, that's a long story. When you use the QR code as a Salvadorian, payments are instant. Better working than the Lightning Network. Why is that? Because this is just an inner ledger. So nothing actually moves in the blockchain, you know? When you tell the Salvadorian that, sorry, I'm Italian, I cannot have Chivo, so I'm using a different wallet, and my different wallet is not compatible with this QR code. I actually need a Bitcoin QR code. They go wild. They panic. They don't know what to do. Probably they're going to call their boss if they are not owning the store, because they never did it. So you have actually to convince them that this is possible, that the transaction is going to be safe, and you have to show them. They don't know what's an on-chain transaction. They don't even know what is a lightning transaction. They can tell the, different, the, the difference between the two. They don't know even how to do a lightning transaction. In the first version of Chivo Wallet, the lightning option was so hidden. Now they fix that, uh, I have to be honest, with version 2.0. The UI was so poorly designed that I couldn't find how to generate a QR code. I had to call poor Giacomo, do you remember that? Because he was there the week before for the conference. Bro, tell me how to do this because I feel dumb. Okay? So what's going on there is that they have been given a tool called the Chivo Wallet that is been wildly adopted, but they don't know nothing about Bitcoin. And why is that? Why is that? Because of this. 
This moment is where President Nahib Bukele told the Salvadorian about the Shivo project. And you see, every Salvadorian, while we're downloading the app, they will get a $30 airdrop. All you needed to do is download Chivo, put your, put your ID number, so KYCA, um, and get $30 airdrop, right? Uh, keep this in mind. We're talking about a country where the average salary is $300. So 30 bucks for them, it's a decent chunk of money. So they flowed at the app stores to get this thing, right? And what they did after, of course, they spent these $30, right? They used them to pay their thing. And the problem was that once the, this credit was exhausted, they simply switched back to the cash-based dollar society El Salvador is nowadays and always have been, right? So that's why they don't even know about Bitcoin, because after three months of the adoption, we were basically the first crazy Italians that were asking to do a, 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 a Bitcoin transaction. And they didn't open the Chivo wallet for weeks, if not uh, a couple of months. And this is so true that what you actually see in stores, especially in big store, is this sign, right? They don't tell you, we accept Bitcoin. They tell you, we accept Chivo. So due to the lack of education, what El Salvador, not El Salvador, I'm sorry, what President Nahib Bukele is actually in achieving to do is a rebranding of the Bitcoin logo. It's not Bitcoin for them, it's Chivo. And Chivo is shit. It's so buggy. It hits, uh, it, it hits up your transaction. Lightning transaction, they work very erratically. Uh, I know friends in El Salvador, their money disappeared from day or night. When something like that happens to a Salvadorian, they blame Bitcoin. Because they can't tell the difference from the Bitcoin protocol, the one unstoppable form of free money, from the bad state center implementation of the Bitcoin protocol they have been given. This is what's going on in El Salvador. This photo, we took this photo in uh, Santa Rosa. This is one of the main center of Nueva Ideas. Nueva Ideas is actually the political party of Nahib Bukele. He made it, Taylor made it for himself when he was kicked out of the other uh, pre-existing uh, political party. We entered this place because we wanted to talk to hardcore Bukele supporter to understand if at least them, if they knew something about Bitcoin, if, if they had some form of education. They all had Bitcoin with them. They loved Bitcoin. They were very nice to us. They were hodlers. They proclaimed themselves as hodlers, but nobody knew nothing. And see, this is another very, uh, I think disturbing thing that is going on in El Salvador, which is the politicization of Bitcoin. When you talk to Bukele supporters, they love Bitcoin, but they don't get it. When you talk to who's okay with Bukele, they uh, kind of swallow the Bitcoin thing, but they don't trust it, and they stick to their dollars. When you talk to the opposition, rich and wealthy, mid you upper class usually. They hate Bitcoin, they don't even care. They don't care if this can be a tool that can achieve a better life and better quality of life for their people in their country. Bitcoin is Bukele and Bukele is Bitcoin for them. And the only reason why this is actually happening is because there is a big lack of education. Bukele promised the, Sa the Salvadorian live t in TV a thousand Bitcoin teacher. He delivered zero. Thank God, thank God, we have Bitcoiners and we are good in fixing stuff. These guys are called Mi Primer Bitcoin. They are a fantastic group of uh, Bitcoin educators. Sal most of them are Salvadorian. 
they are teaching real Bitcoin to other teachers and they do free lessons all over the country. Think about them as our meetups, but even smaller sometimes. And they don't, uh, they don't stick to, sm to, to big cities. They go deep in the small villages. They, they teach to farmers. They teach to workers. They give real Bitcoin education. And there's more. They started a project, we were there while this happened for the first time, with a school in San Salvador called La Pacheco, and they are doing there the first Bitcoin diploma, the first course of Bitcoin for school, for free school, for public education, right? This is just a test. It's just one school, one high school in, in San Salvador, 700 students though by the way so <laughs> a really big a really big uh, high school but they are now planning to deliver education to many other schools in the country possibly to a mil 1.5 million people what i hold in my hands now guys this is historical this is the first textbook on bitcoin for public school that has ever been printed. Behold, in 20 years, all our kids are gonna study on a book or on an ebook like that. And you know what's great of this book? There's no fucking Chivo. They don't name Chivo, not a single time. This is real, grassroots, hardcore Bitcoin education, right? So please, remember this name, Mi Primer Bitcoin, up there on the right corner. You can donate. It's all granted. You can read their, ro their roadmap. It doesn't matter how much sats, every sats counts. Support these guys because this is how we fix the mess that a Bitcoin law is in El Salvador at the moment. It's on them. It's not on the government. But it's a very interesting. It's a very interesting experiment. We should pay attention to what's going on there. And it's not going to happen soon. We, as Bitcoiners, we like things to happen fast, instantly. We want this creature to succeed. But the truth is that it's going to take us decades, even in El Salvador, to achieve something. Because this is something so revolutionary that it takes time for people to learn to grasp it, especially in developing markets. And it's for them. Let's keep this in mind. It's for the developing countries that Bitcoin was made, primarily. We have to still focus on El Salvador. We have to be the watchtowers. We have to watch the government, what, what it's doing. That's why I'm gonna go, we are going to go back there this fall. We're going to do again the whole tour to chronicle what's going on, what is changing in year. But this time, we're going to do more. We're going to go to Guatemala. We're going to go to Costa Rica. We're going to go probably to Panama, probably to Honduras. Because if it's something good that Bitcoin could achieve in El Salvador, is that Bitcoin put El Salvador on a map. Nobody knew what El Salvador was before Bitcoin, and it was the country of murderers, right? And Central America is a small part of a continent, so the world spreads. And other communities, they want to do what Bitcoin did in El Salvador. They want to do what the Bitcoin Beach did in El Salvador. They want to see if they can start a revolution from the bottom. They want to use Bitcoin to create a circular economy that is going to benefit them all. And they're going to probably do it the right way. This is what I want to see. But the question here is, uh, these experiments are better than El Salvador? Is grassroots Bitcoin adoption better than state-driven adoption? To be honest with you, I think it is. I think it's the only possible adoption because, it, because it's with the people, right? So Bitcoin doesn't need a law. Because doesn't need a law, because laws are made by states, by dictators, by government. And usually those people, they have their own agenda, right? They twist things to achieve what, is, what, what their goal are. 
Bitcoin is freedom, Bitcoin is anarchy. The legal tender is an aberration ultimately because Bitcoin doesn't really need a law because we should always keep in mind that Bitcoin is already law itself. Thank you. One question. That was great. Thank you. Uh, we have time for one question. Fast one. Somebody? Okay. Yay. Question. Very simple question. I just want to know, can we get copies of that textbook from somewhere? Is there somewhere we can order that, download a PDF of it, whatever? This is actually the second version of the book. Uh, a third version uh, is being printed as we speak. And by the way, it was reviewed by that young Bitcoiner guy called Giacomo Zucco. I don't know if you ever heard about him. It's a new, it's a new guy that just hit the scene. So no, I don't think you can buy it. But the intention of the guys that are sponsoring this thing, uh, uh, it's called Ibex Mercado, by the way. They are very active down in Central America, and their payment methods on Lightning are instant fast. They want to actually make uh, the book uh, common creation. So it's going to probably be available to anyone to copy, to distribute, to read, to use. So we'll see that. <laughs> Christmas time. Uh, know your customers, us. <laughs> Thank you, Ricardo. Thank That's you, great. guys. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Anita Posh now is going to kick asses. <laughs>